Good morning, everyone. Today I will show the results uh, of a review on last interglacial sea level proxies uh, in the Western Mediterranean. Before doing that, though, I would like to point out a couple of things. First of all, uh, I would like to point out that uh, we are living in a digital era where we see an expansion of uh, uh, data. If we look at the time frame for two from 2013 uh, to 2020, digital data has been increasing tenfold. And uh, most of it, it is unstructured data. This means that it's data which is not organized inside the relational databases that can, be, that can be queried and can be interrogated um, within a structured, ordered um, set of functions. Unluckily, unluckily, also scientific publications, in a way, are part of the unstructured data. This is an example of a publication I did uh, in 2020 describing a Pliocene shoreline uh, in Argentina. And uh, if the paper was, was stopping uh, at what it does, so the description of the section and the presentation of GPS and dating data also within tables, this would be still unstructured. To make the results of this paper structured, we have to include the results inside uh, a structured uh, standardized framework and share it openly. For example, the data from this paper, both GPS, dating results, etc., are shared within uh, a Zenodo uh, open access repository. We have been discussing these sort of problems uh, um, in the policy community. That is, uh, how do we standardize sea level data? How do we give a standard template for sea level data? And this is a graph from a paper from uh, Andrew Duster, who's uh, et al, dated 2016, where we were thinking how uh, to bring measurements and documentation, interpretation of data towards database creation and into the communities that most uh, need this, the kind, this kind of data, policy level data, to build upon and do new science. Um, while uh, Nicole Kahn et al. within the Holsey project concentrated mostly on the uh, Holocene, uh, within the Warm Coast ERC project, which is a project that I lead, we started to um, look at the last interglacial 125,000 years ago. And this is a moment in the Earth history which is really important because uh, it's considered a proxy analog for a future warmer period. Now, there are some databases, databases of last interglacial sea level data existing, uh, namely those by Kopp et al. 2009, Hibbert et al. 2016, and Pedosia et al. 2014, and many other regional ones. Uh, for example, Luigi Ferranti for, for Italy, uh, published in Quaterno International. But most of these databases are not really databases, are just spreadsheets. And this means that they have a one-on-one -on -one relationship between data uh, and, uh, uh, for example, dating techniques. But things uh, are slightly more complicated than this. Because, uh, for example, if you look at any outcrop that we study for the last interglacial, such as this one, which is located in the Caribbean. Uh, we have, for example, one sea level index point, maybe. Uh, in this case, it's an intertidal beach rock where uh, Ciro Cerrone here is placing the GPS to measure it. But at the same time, we might have different, uh, for example, chronologic constraints. Here, for example, I, uh, we, we might have different luminescence ages, different amino acid resemination ages, electron spin resonance, and new series ages. And we, are, we also have many different papers describing the same outcrop, maybe giving different interpretations. So we cannot manage these relationships inside a one-on-one -on -one database, but we have to go inside a, what we call one-to-n or n-to-n uh, relationships. And this is why we need a relational database. So this is what we did with uh, Wallis, the World Atlas of Last Interglacial Shoreline. The short video you're seeing here is uh, uh, the framework we used we use to actually give people access to the database you can register with a username and password and you can access an interface that will allow you to both uh, query and download sea level data that has been inserted by different people or insert your own data uh, following the standardized template that we studied within the sea level community working on last interglacial sea levels 
you see that there are uh, also sheets for um, not only sheets for sea level information but sheets only also for dating information this is for example the sheet related to you series and as everything can become a little bit overwhelming we also have YouTube videos uh, a YouTube channel to actually show um, tutorials and we have uh, a read the docs where you can find the description of every um, uh, every field that you're supposed to fill in within the database so this is how we manage this kind of this kind of work and we are filling this database thanks to the help with the community um, by uh, making a special issue on uh, um, the journal earth system science data right now we have 13 papers accepted for publication in this journal in this uh, in this special issue two preprints three papers that are in preparation. And it's, it's very nice to say that 80% of first authors are either non-male, early career, or both. So we are also having a look into uh, diversity of our author, author pool. Um, and associated to all these papers, which describe the data sets in different regions, we also have a Zenodo repository, a Zenodo community is called, where we actually um, store the data set which is prepared with our interface by the different authors. Now what we did uh, together with uh, Ciro Cerrone, Matteo Vacchi and Alessandro Fontana was to take a little bit of this database uh, for the, the Western Mediterranean and compile data for the Western Mediterranean. Now it was not an easy task because we had to review 179 studies and the database actually contained 371 sea level data points and 304 dated samples. So there is a lot of information inside this database. And here you see uh, the geographic span of our database. It's very interesting to notice that if we plot the luminescence, electrospin resonance and new series ages across the Western Mediterranean, you see different uh, uh, peaks in frequency. For example, U series seem to align mostly with 5E and 5A uh, shorelines. I'm not going to make an interpretation on this because the error bars are fairly large. These are only the ages on corals from the Mediterranean, so there are not that many, but this is what we get. Um, whereas luminescence, for example, seems to concentrate mostly on 5E and 5C whereas uh, ESR seems spanning most of MIS-5. Although uh, what this graph is telling us is that there are actually quite a lot of, uh, uh, there is actually quite a lot of error involved uh, into uh, the dating in the Western Mediterranean. But I think the database is particularly useful when we start looking at different regions. So in the paper we have uh, we describe every region one by one, uh, mostly going by uh, provincial, um, provincial boundaries and regional boundaries from the different countries. Uh, this is an example from Sardinia. This is a tectonically stable area. Uh, it's often considered one of the most tectonically stable areas in the Mediterranean. And you see here that if I go around Sardinia and I make a, a transect around Sardinia, most of the sea level index points from MIS-5E are aligned around, let's say, 2 to 10 meters above sea level. Now, there are studies, uh, one of them very recent by Blake Dyer in PNAS, showing that um, the last interglacial sea level was probably above 1.5 meters, but below 5. There are other studies, namely Dutton et al. Uh, in Science back in 2015, showing that instead the sea level could have been 5 to 10 meters. But you see that here we are within this 10 meters range. So we are um, fairly close to what is uh, what could be a global mean uh, sea level, although this data is not yet corrected for um, glacial isostatic adjustment. And then we have areas, uh, for example, the part of the Alboran Sea uh, and, and the southern part of the Western Mediterranean, let's say from Tangeri to Algeri, where we can actually observe active tectonics. So, so we see the shorelines going up or down according to the different tectonical regimes that there are in different parts. And in the database, there are also regions which are not, uh, let's say, well covered by data. Uh, this is one in particular where I'm starting to work right now together with uh, Matteo Vacchi, but also together with uh, Marta Papalardo from the University of Pisa. 
where we actually uh, do not have a lot of data. For example, Liguria, I was saying, um, where you see there are very few points. And the question we're asking in these new works that we are starting to do is, um, are these points not there? Are, is this place lacking in last interglacial sea level or uh, last interglacial sea level shore, last interglacial shorelines have not been found yet. So this is what we are set to do in the next, uh, uh, in the next uh, phase of our, of our work in the Western Mediterranean, going into the areas where we see gaps and trying to understand better these gaps. So I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, if you wanna know more about our efforts on the Western Mediterranean, there is a paper uh, under review. Uh, the preprint is already available. Also our answer to the reviewer is already available in the journal. So you can have a, have a look and uh, um, look into this. Uh, if you want the data, uh, the data is already in Zenodo. So you can search for them and download the spreadsheet with all our data. And I leave it here. I thank you very much for the attention, just pointing out that these slides will be on Figshare in a couple of days. And if you want to engage with us in discussions, you can either engage with me uh, at Alessio R or at Wallis database if you want to discuss directly about the database. And if you want more information about uh, the Warm Coast project, you can go to www.warmcoasts.eu. Thank you very much and have a good day.